Hi, I'm Mike Field. I'm Mike Butler. You're watching Now Renting with Forgotten Cinema, and today we're doing the movie The Climb. Mike, what's The Climb about? The Climb is a film about two guys' lives. Nope. You said you know it. You yep. said you know it. Yep, I know. The Climb is a look at two best friends' lives over the course of many years. Aw. Right? You'll never know. Sorry. No, that's fine. This this friendship will end after this video is <laughs> over. So you obviously got onto Roy because you're thinking about watching The Climb. That's why you clicked on this video, hopefully. We're going to give you three things each that we like about the movie. We have not discussed them, so we do not know what we, they are. So there could be some, some fisticuffs. Probably not because, you know, that's a little embarrassing to put on video. I think so. Right. So what's your number one reason why people should watch The Climb? The number one reason, I think, are the long takes and tracking shots in this film. It's fantastic the way it's presented. Uh, the film opens with a super long one where they're on bicycles. It's and, like 11 minutes long, uh, Yeah, if you've watched the trailer, that's how the film opens. And it's just absolutely incredible. 11 minutes, there's no cutaways, there's no nothing. The actors are performing the entire time. It's almost like stagecraft. They stick to the script and they have to perform throughout that whole thing. There's no breakaways, there's no cutaways. So, yeah, so that's the same thing. I, I, do, I do love a good one shot. And I think when the first scene was opening on, they're on the bikes, they're going down the hill. Uh, I, I kind of realized that, wait a minute, they haven't cut yet out of this out of this scene. And so I was infinitely like, OK, I am I am all in now. I'm I'm very interested. I, I love the shot when they go into the house and they're going around the house. and You see all the action going through the window uh, and you see everything playing out like that. I just the I like you said, just what everything goes into making those one shots happen. It, it, while it looks so easy on screen for maybe people watching, you know that that took weeks of rehearsal, hopefully, hopefully not too long, but. It just took a lot of rehearsal to get oh, it done. So, yeah, yeah, no, it's definitely something that I could appreciate more. What's your number two reason why maybe people should watch this movie on row eight? The performances of the two actors, uh, Kyle Marvin and Michelangelo Covino, do a fantastic job as perform as portraying best friends. And, you know, their relationship might have ups and downs and stuff like that. But it really is. There's the chemistry between them is real. Um, I don't know if they're like best friends in real life. I did not look that up. But <laughs> are you? It, it really seems like they must be because of how easy the back and forth is between the two actors. And since this film is carried on the backs of them, they are in every scene, usually together, uh, very seldom by themselves. And this film wouldn't work without that relationship and that chemistry between them. It's great. So I'm going to break format because you usually go back and forth, back and forth. But I'm going to take two and three together because they're based, they're the same. And it goes off of what you're talking about. So number one is the brotherly bond that best friends have together. Mm -hmm. That's very, it, it's very real that it's like a marriage. You're, you know, it's something that you have to work at. You have fights, you have disagreements, you don't get along all the times, but you, right. there is that bond that best friends have because it's not like brothers. We're brothers. You're, you grew up together. For best friends, you found each other in this world through thick and thin. We'll stick together. I think they do a very good job doing that. And I think the dialogue, my number three is the dialogue. It's it's witty. It's funny. It's smart. It's very at ease. It's like like oh, almost yeah. like they rehearsed it over and over again. I just didn't feel anything was anything was forced at all in this movie in terms of their dialogue. All the actors, all the characters, not just the two leads, but all of them. So that those were my two and three. What's your number three? Uh, my number three would be the nod to French cinema. Uh, this movie is absolutely kind of is a love letter to French cinema and. They do it in a way that I don't think is kind of snooty or like raises their nose at people that might not know French cinema. It's not just for cinephiles. And I think that very few films are able to do that without kind of being snooty and being like, well, if you don't like this, then you don't, you don't, you just don't get it. Uh, they're able to really borrow a lot from French cinema and present it in a way, a consumable way for, I think, American audiences that aren't used to that, where it's not going to be kind of trying to alienate them. And it's just a really unique way to present your film. And I really, really enjoy that. That's one thing with this being an independently produced movie. Uh, you don't have the, I guess, all the uh, cooks in the kitchen kind of thing. You don't have an executive telling you why you're doing that. You're allowed to do. You're allowed to take chances. And maybe if you don't like the French angle or the French cinema angle that you're talking about, you can still respect the fact that they went for it and they did it. Right. And I think you can find a lot of really cool things in indie films that you would have been focus grouped out for bigger for bigger movies. Oh, absolutely. So definitely. Uh, I definitely have a soft spot for indie films. So that's another reason why I really like this movie. Oh, that's a fourth thing. I know. I, I kinda, Again, like I said, I broke format with the three. So now I can give four. Number five. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so we hope that you enjoyed this. We hope maybe this helped you choose the climb. It's not a long movie. It's like an hour and a half, right? Hour eight, uh, yeah, hour it's, 25. It's, it's super breezy. Yeah, it's definitely, a, it's definitely a fun movie to watch. We definitely recommend it. Hopefully you can check it out on our way right now. 
So Mike, they might not know who we are. I know we said this is now renting with Forgotten Cinema. We are Forgotten Cinema. Well, who are we? Uh, we are a podcast. Forgotten Cinema is a podcast about films that seem to be forgotten by audiences. You can find us uh, wherever podcasts can be found. And for any of your movie rental needs, stick to row eight. So I really like how you stay on brand there. Good job. Right. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent job. (laughs) So I'm Mike Field. I'm Mike Butler. You have been watching Now Renting with Forgotten Cinema, brought to you by Row 8. Did you wink? I did wink. Told you I would.